For the past 20 to 30 years, highway and transportation departments have been building many miles of surfaced and unsurfaced roads. In the last few years, the pace of construction has been slowed, and it is now necessary to think about how best to preserve the investment we have in the roads built. It is therefore appropriate that some type of system be developed so that priorities be established and decisions be made as to when a pavement needs maintenance and what the best procedure is to use in a given situation. A rating system can also help establish which pavements are in the most critical condition. When a bituminous pavement is considered for maintenance, there are five possible procedures available to the engineer. Seal coat, structural overlay, rebuilding the pavement section, and recycling. Another choice is to do nothing and hope for the best. Maintenance criteria provide a means of determining when a pavement needs something done to it and what procedure to use. When the pavement is in need of maintenance, criteria based on a standard set of conditions must be established. In many cases, this is taken as every X number of years. However, the proper time for maintenance should rather be judged based on these conditions. One, the serviceability, or how well the pavement rides. Two, the structural condition of the pavement. This can be evaluated using the amount and type of cracking and rutting. Three, the surface condition of the pavement. And four, the alignment, width, etc. of the roadway, which will help establish whether major rebuilding will be done in the near future. This presentation focuses on a surface condition rating system which can be used to establish the need for a seal coat or surface treatment. This rating form provides a list of the items considered for defining surface condition. The numbers one through eight show the items to be rated. The factors are kept separate because their causes are different and independent. For instance, the progression of weathering can occur with no surface wear. It is therefore not considered appropriate to combine these items. The types of pavement deterioration can be separated into traffic associated or wear and non-traffic associated or weathering. Traffic associated distress can generally be observed in the wheel path, whereas non-traffic associated distress can generally be observed across the pavement and be most significant between wheel paths. Surface conditions or deterioration due to traffic are general structural condition and wear, which includes abrasion and bleeding. Bleeding of a bituminous pavement usually is observed in the wheel path, which is why it is included under the term wear. The rating system involves the definition of the deterioration and an attempt is made to describe various stages or degrees of deterioration by putting numbers on them as shown. To help define the numerical ratings, each even digit of the various types of deterioration is given the description shown, which defines qualitatively the respective level or degree of deterioration. A higher rating indicates a better condition. For instance, when a pavement is stressed due to traffic loading, distress usually first shows up as a longitudinal crack in the wheel path. This then will progress to pattern or block cracking which incidentally is not as serious as when smaller grid or alligator cracking develops. If alligator cracking is allowed to progress, erosion of the pavement surface will result. These levels of deterioration can be defined as part of a numerical rating system. If the pavement were allowed to break up due to traffic associated loading without repairing it, all of the stages would be observed over a period of time. For an underdesigned pavement, it would be rapid and for a well-designed one, it would progress at a slower rate through the design period. In terms of when something should be done to the pavement, certainly nothing would be done at a rating of 5.0. However, some initial work, like crack filling, may be considered at a rating of 4.0. At this level, there are longitudinal cracks in the wheel path. More work may be considered at this level where block cracks begin to occur. When the least dimension is between 6 and 12 inches, a rating of 3.0 is given the pavement. If the pavement is allowed to deteriorate further under traffic, the crack pattern will become smaller, less than 6 inches, which is defined as alligator cracking. 
This pavement is at that stage of deterioration and is defined as having a general structural rating of 2.0. If nothing is done to a pavement with a rating of 2.0, it will eventually drop to a rating of 1.0, at which point much of the investment in that pavement has been lost. Major maintenance, rebuilding, or recycling are the only logical means of rehabilitation in this case. These conditions are represented in the general structural condition column on the rating form. It's possible to have a pavement at a level between those described. In this case, notice that the longitudinal cracks are just beginning to connect transversely. This condition can be represented by a rating between 3.0 and 4.0 here about 3.5. If the pavement drops to a condition defined less than 2.0, then the surface and pavement investment is being lost. By defining and rating a system of pavements periodically, it should be possible to preserve this investment. The next two conditions considered are wear and weathering. Traffic wear, which shows in the wheel path, can be considered deterioration due to scraping by tires, whereas Weathering, which shows between the wheel paths, is defined as deterioration due to the elements, wind, water, sun, and so on. When considering wear or weathering, the pavement surface will look different and show deterioration in a somewhat different way, depending on whether the surface is the original bituminous mat or whether it has been seal coated or surface treated. The condition of the seal coat or surface treatment becomes the important factor for that surface. Traffic wear is defined as deterioration due to the abrasive action of tires, or traffic, on the surface. Studded tires have been shown to accelerate this type of deterioration. Wear shows up as either, one, erosion of the sand matrix, resulting in coarse aggregate protruding, hard aggregate, or, two, wearing down of the total mix when the coarse aggregate is relatively soft. The first case is most prevalent because usually good coarse aggregate is used. The second case shows up as an increase in rut depth. For the case when there is relatively hard coarse aggregate, these conditions can be observed in the wheel paths as deterioration progresses. First, the new surface is uniform across the pavement, both in the wheel path and between, a rating of 5.0. Then the color and outline of the coarse aggregate shows in the wheel path more than between, indicating that the asphalt has worn off the aggregate surface, a rating of 4.0. Next, the coarse aggregate protrudes up to 1 16th of an inch, indicating that the sand matrix or mortar is being kicked out or worn away by the tire action, a rating of 3.0. Then the coarse aggregate protrudes more than 1 16th of an inch, indicating that the sand matrix has continued to be kicked out, making the coarse aggregate susceptible to being abraded out by additional tire action, a rating of 2.0. Eventually, more than 20% of the coarse aggregate is kicked out of the wheel path, indicating that the sand matrix has been so eroded that it can no longer hold the coarse aggregate, a rating of 1.0. There may be all levels of conditions between those described. These intermediate conditions can be indicated numerically by using ratings such as 2.6 or 3.2. Here is a relatively new plant mix overlay with aggregates showing more in the wheel path, but not protruding. The traffic wear rating is 4.0. This is an unsealed surface mix with the coarse aggregate showing and protruding more than 1 16th of an inch in the wheel paths. The surface wear rating is 2.5 where not sealed and 3.8 where sealed because the sand matrix has been replaced to some extent. This is an unsealed surface mix with the coarse aggregate showing and protruding much more than 1 16th of an inch and with coarse aggregate kicking out. The wear rating for this pavement is 1.0. These examples have shown some levels of surface wear due to abrasion of a pavement surface that has not been seal coated. Another effect of tires on a pavement is that of pumping asphalt to the surface of the pavement, eventually causing a bleeding condition. This effect has been included under traffic associated conditions because it is caused by tire action and can be observed in the wheel paths. 
It would occur in pavements that have relatively higher asphalt contents than those on which wearing away or abrasion of the surface would be observed. The descriptive terms in this table are used to describe the degree of bleeding or progression of bleeding. On the left is a chip seal, which is just starting to get rich in the wheel path. However, the aggregate still shows and protrudes. The rating is 3.5. On the right, the seal is bleeding, but the aggregate shows some. The traffic wear rating due to bleeding in that area is 2.0. In this example, there is a chip seal in which the asphalt is filling the surface between the seal aggregate, but has not covered the aggregate. The wear rating due to bleeding is 3.5 on the right and 2.5 on the left. This road has a serious bleeding problem, which would result in hydroplaning during wet conditions. The asphalt has bled up over aggregate or aggregate has been eroded off, leaving continuous excess asphalt. The bleeding for this pavement is 1.0. Some maintenance is certainly required for this situation. In summary, pavement surfaces can be put into three categories for purposes of rating relative to traffic surface wear or tire action on a pavement wheel path. Tire action can cause either abrasion, eroding out, of surface material, or bleeding, excess asphalt, on the surface. When either of these conditions gets to a low enough level, some type of resurfacing is necessary. When judging the degree of abrasion, the observable items will be somewhat different, depending on whether the surface has been previously seal coated or not. Rating of sealed surfaces for wear is the same as for weathering of sealed surfaces. Before making the wear rating, the rater must indicate what situation is being rated. Whether, one, there has been a seal coat or not, and two, if the surface is tending to bleed or is rich. This information will indicate what type of corrective measures are appropriate, along with which descriptive ratings to use to judge the degree of deterioration. So far, we have looked at deterioration of a pavement surface that is associated with tire abrasion on the surface or with tire pumping action, which shows up as distress in the wheel paths. In addition to these effects, heat, water and wind can deteriorate a road surface. These factors will act on the pavement uniformly across the surface, except in protected areas. The most critical areas with respect to weathering will most likely be between the wheel paths, because in some cases, the kneading action of tires has reduced the drying out effect caused by weathering. The rater should, therefore, look at the pavement surface between the wheel paths when giving a rating of weathering. The degree of weathering must also be judged differently, depending on whether the surface is the original bituminous mixture or if it has been seal coated with an aggregate topping. Here is a list of the descriptions of the various levels of weathering of a pavement surface. The cracking observed relative to weathering is caused by shrinkage or drying out of the mat, which should occur uniformly across the surface or be more prominent between the wheel paths. This condition may not be as serious in the wheel path because the tire action might actually decrease the drying out effect. Here are some examples of weathering rating levels. This is a new pavement, which has a uniform color across the surface and thus has a weathering rating of 5.0. Here is an area near a center line, which illustrates the condition where the aggregate shows outside the wheel path due to weathering. However, the aggregate does not protrude and therefore the weathering rating is 4+. The sand matrix has been eroded away outside the wheel paths of this surface. The aggregate protrudes slightly, yielding a weathering rating of 3.5. Here, the aggregate is showing across the whole pavement and protrudes somewhat, especially between the wheel paths, but not as much as 1 16th of an inch. The weathering rating is therefore 3.0. This is an example of shrinkage cracking between the wheel paths, indicating drying out of the mat. There is also aggregate protruding uniformly across the wheel path. The weathering rating is 2.0. The wear and weathering ratings of bituminous pavements with seal coats depend on the loss of seal aggregate. The loss of aggregate leaves either a rich surface or the original mat. If more than 50% of the seal coat is gone, 
Then the original mat is rated. Here is a pavement with a chip seal with between 10 and 50% of the aggregate worn off between the wheel paths on the lane to the right. The weathering rating is 3.0. This seal coat aggregate is more than 50% eroded off across the pavement with only bituminous material covering the mat. The weathering rating is 2.0. More than 50% of the seal aggregate is eroded off across this pavement and distress in the original mat is showing through. The weathering rating of the seal coat is 1.5 and of the original mat 3.0 because the abraded sand matrix has been filled in somewhat by the seal coat. In addition to structural condition, wear, and weathering, the following characteristics can also be used to define the surface condition of a pavement. Skid resistance, uniformity, and crack condition. Of these, the skid resistance or friction is the only condition that would be of primary importance in terms of setting up resurfacing criteria. Skid resistance is considered above wear and weathering because of safety considerations. Uniformity of texture and color should be subordinate to the other three characteristics because it has to do with appearance which is not directly related to safety or loss of investment. However, if funds are available for resurfacing a pavement which rates low on appearance, resurfacing may be appropriate. Crack condition ratings could be used to determine if crack filling or repair might be appropriate before or instead of a seal coat. The considerations and methods of rating these characteristics are given so that a complete picture of the surface condition can be presented in rating form. This gives the maintenance engineer information for making decisions with respect to suitable surface maintenance. If the skid resistance or friction of a pavement is low, causing a significant increase in accidents, something must be done to the surface of the pavement no matter what the other surface condition ratings are. The low skid resistance may be due to an excess of asphalt on the surface of the pavement or polishing of the aggregate surfaces. A number of agencies now have skid trailers that make it possible to obtain a measure of the skid resistance by a physical test yielding a number that could be used to rate the pavement. However, there is little agreement as to what level skid number a pavement should be resurfaced. It is hoped that with the amount of work being done in this field, more universal criteria based on skid number measurements can be developed. If a usable system employing a skid meter has not been developed by an agency, a rough visual measure of skid resistance is suggested using these descriptions. There is no sure way of describing the level of friction for each rating. The only way is to observe the relative skid resistance of many pavements and thereby establish experience as to the ordering of the levels of skid resistance or friction. The descriptions of coarse and gritty are only general in nature. If coarse aggregate and fine aggregate are slightly exposed at the surface and would be in contact with the tires, the coarse description is used. The good rating is used when the exposed aggregate is relatively angular, and the fair rating is used when the aggregate is more rounded in nature. The gritty description refers to a sandy texture which, again, would be classified as good if the particles were angular and fair if the particles were more rounded. The aggregate descriptions slightly polished and polished refer to the condition when a sheen starts to develop on a relatively hard aggregate due to the scrubbing action of tires. This would not be as bad as a bleeding condition, rating 1.0, because of the greater likelihood of hydroplaning on a bleeding pavement. The actual range of skid resistance as measured by a skid trailer would probably overlap the descriptions presented. However, if reliable criteria have not been developed based on the skid number, the descriptive ratings can be used to give at least a general indication of skid resistance of the surface. One of the reasons given for seal coating a pavement has been to cover up a pavement that looks bad because a great deal of maintenance patching and spot sealing has been done on the surface. The ratings and descriptions for this condition are shown here. A streaked appearance is generally due to non-uniform application of a seal coat binder. This pavement has just been recently seal coated and is slightly streaked. 
It's an example of a pavement rated 3.5 for uniformity because of the streaking. When cracks are filled, the filler is usually darker than the rest of the surface and shows up when one looks down the road. Here's an example of a uniformity rating of 3.0 because of crack filling. Blotchy conditions are the result of a number of different applications of spot seals and overlays to correct previous structural or surface deteriorations. A rating of this condition is made by making an overview of the road, rather than by looking at one particular spot. This pavement has a surface with a uniformity rating of 2.0 because of many patches and spot seal coats. The final factor that is used to define the surface characteristics of a pavement is the condition of the longitudinal and transverse cracks. The ratings presented in this section can be used to evaluate the effectiveness of crack fillers in addition to seal coats to improve the crack conditions. The condition of the cracks is defined based on three characteristics, opening, abrasion or erosion, and multiplicity. Crack opening refers to how wide the crack is open all the way through the surface mixture. If the top of the crack is worn back, this additional erosion is not added to the amount of opening. Abrasion or erosion of the crack edge is related to the amount of wearing back of the crack at the surface. These are the ratings defined relative to the edge wearing back. Multiplicity refers to how much additional cracking is associated with the cracks. The multiplicity associated with transverse or longitudinal cracks may be due to brittleness of the surface mixture and lack of continuous support of the surface. The lack of support is caused by weakening of the underlying material because of infiltration of water into the crack. To represent multiplicity conditions, ratings with these descriptions are used. The crack shown here is only open slightly more than a hairline, has very little abrasion of the edge, and there are no associated cracks. The ratings for opening, abrasion, and multiplicity are therefore 4.0, 4.5, and 5.0, respectively. These three numbers indicate a crack which is in generally good condition. This crack has been filled in the background, but not in the foreground. Where it has been filled, the ratings for opening, abrasion, and multiplicity are 5.0, 5.0, and 5.0, respectively. Where it has not been filled, it is open about one quarter inch, abraded back somewhat, and has one or two random associated cracks. The ratings are therefore 3.5, 3.0, and 4.0 respectively. This longitudinal crack is open and abraded down to one inch, but only has a few random associated cracks. The ratings for opening, abrasion, and multiplicity are 1.0, 1.0, and 4.0 respectively. The use of the three-number rating system makes it possible to describe a crack in this condition specifically. Consistent rating and an understanding of the system is necessary to make it meaningful to a maintenance engineer. Here's a crack with quite different characteristics. The opening is minimal, but there has evidently been weakening of the base or subgrade, causing associated patterned cracking. This crack would have ratings of 4.0, 4.0 and 2.5 respectively to describe this situation. Just as for the previous ratings, there are possibilities for all degrees or levels of conditions between those described. In order to cover these possible variations, ratings to the nearest 0.1 between those listed can be used. In summary, to define the surface condition of a bituminous pavement, the degree or level of these conditions are defined. 1. General structural condition. 2. Wear, no seal or sealed. 3. Weathering, no seal or sealed. 4. Skid resistance. 5. Uniformity. 6. Crack condition. Each of these conditions is listed on the surface condition rating sheet. The appropriate ratings can be checked off across the sheet. The general structural condition refers to the deterioration of the pavement in the wheel paths due to the traffic loading. For wear and skid resistance, 
reference is made to the surface condition of wheel paths, whereas for the other conditions, the surface is rated overall, and the most critical area is considered to be between the wheel paths relative to abrasion of the surface. Wear can show as wearing down of the wheel paths due to abrasion of just the sand matrix or of the whole mixture. The condition of excess asphalt in the wheel paths, or bleeding, has also been defined as a condition of wear. The degree of weathering also is defined somewhat differently, depending on whether the surface is an original bituminous mat, or if it has been seal coated, or is a surface treatment type pavement. Examples have been presented to illustrate various degrees of wear and weathering as defined. A very general rating system has been presented for skid resistance. Because of the difficulty of rating this condition by qualitative observation, it is suggested that a quantitative measure of skid resistance, such as obtained with a skid trailer, be used if possible. The system presented herein should be used if a skid number measurement is not available. The condition of uniformity is also defined by degree with ratings. These items are not considered as important as wear, weathering, and skid resistance, but do help to define the condition of the surface. This is an example of what a rating form looks like with the ratings marked. First, it's important to include the date and the location of the pavement being rated so that the ratings can be referenced properly. Second, the proper box must be checked, indicating whether the surface is an original surface mix or if it has been seal coated. The general structural rating for this pavement is 4.2, which means that some slight longitudinal cracks are beginning to appear. The pavement is in good structural condition. Therefore, it does not need a structural overlay. However, if a strength test were run, it might be found that the pavement should be overlaid to strengthen it for the predicted traffic throughout the design period. The conditions that have been shown to be helped by a seal coat over a period of time are surface wear, weathering, skid resistance, and uniformity. If any of the first three are less than 3.0, some form of resurfacing should be considered. In this example, the surface wear rating is the only one that is below 3.0, and thus some type of maintenance should be considered. The excess asphalt box has not been checked. Therefore, the surface wear is of the abrasion type. Whether to do something at this level is further tempered by the amount of traffic, availability of funds, philosophy of maintenance, and so on. For instance, if the traffic is very high, some type of maintenance should be performed. The decision of what to do should also be tempered by how fast the given rating has gone down. For this example, it was found that the surface wear rating was 2.8 the previous year. Therefore, because it has decreased by 0.4 in one year, the decision to resurface is made. The type of resurfacing depends on the traffic, funds, climate, and local experience. The crack condition ratings are shown to complete the rating of the surface condition. The crack condition ratings can help indicate which pavements have cracks that need attention the most. The effectiveness of crack filling or other types of treatment can also be determined. In this example, the cracks are in good condition. It is recommended that individual agencies consider running a test program to establish what levels of condition are appropriate for resurfacing criteria. The effectiveness of a maintenance method in improving the surface condition ratings over a period of time can be determined by setting up test sections on projects to be maintained. One section should be worked on and another not on the same project. The effectiveness of the resurfacing would then be determined by the relative condition of the two sections. The surface condition rating system can also be used to monitor the condition of all the roads in a highway system. These ratings along with ratings for rideability, structural condition, and strength, can then be used to establish maintenance criteria not only for seal coats, but also for overlays or other types of maintenance. This presentation has been prepared as part of the Minnesota Local Road Research Board Research Implementation Project, conducted by the St. Paul Technical Vocational Institute and the Minnesota Department of Transportation.